in the wilderness. Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world. Did you notice that we quote John 3.16? Eh? Do you know we quote John 3.16 but we quote it outside its context? Do you know that John 3.16 started with because? Do you see the word is for? Is it like that? For. Because. In the English grammar that we learned, it's not right to start a sentence with because. They told us that it was because abomination is bad grammar. Start because. It's a because what? <laughs> so that meant that John 3.16 could not have been quoted away from its context. And you will find that the context of John 3.16 is the serpent that was put on the tree. John 3.16 actually is dealing with the cross. He said, look, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Now, and I was asking myself, how did Moses lift up the serpent in the wilderness? And if you quickly go back to the Old Testament, what you find is that here were people that have seen and because they have sinned as a just recompense of their misbehavior, the serpent was allowed to bite them. The wages of sin is death. And the serpent that was biting them because of their misbehavior, anybody that the serpent bites, it has no cure, you will die. So when the serpent bites you, you say, yeah, yeah, oh, mom, oh, mom, yeah, he's here, you will die. Even if you hold the leg, you will still die. And the people went and said, Moses, pray for us, we have misbehaved. Tell God to take away the serpent. Now, please listen. I know maybe it was easier. For God to just announce and say, you serpent, get back to your holes. And in a minute, they will. But what did God do? He did something as a foreshadow of what he will do to deal with sin in the world. Let me explain to you that. Are you, are you with me? When God decided... That what he was going to do is not to, to tell the serpent to go back to their holes. He decided that instead we will construct another serpent, a brazen serpent, and we will hang it on the tree. When you put the serpent of brass on the tree, it will be that whosoever has been beaten by the serpent on the ground, who is actually supposed to die, but if he looks to the serpent that is hanging on the tree, that serpent on the tree that has been hanging there, we don't know how. We don't know what will happen, but if you look Something happens to the venom of the serpent on the ground. You shall live. So what did Moses do? Instead of chasing the serpent individually and say, Hey, hey, bring stone here. Please let me keep this one. Please keep this snake. If they were chasing those snakes one by one, they would not have finished chasing them until now. But what did God decide to do? He was going to put a serpent on the, on the tree 
And he said, whosoever of you that has been beaten by the serpent of the ground, lift up your eyes. If you can see, oh brother, if you can see the serpent on the tree, you will live. You will not die again. Now listen, it's very important for you to catch this. Because if we don't, we would jeopardize many more lives. What was it? So, once they put the serpent on the tree, if anything, a serpent bite down the ground, they say, yeah, 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 yeah. What was the only message? Anybody who loves anybody that doesn't want him to die, what did they say? Look up! Look to the tree! Look to the tree! Don't look at me! Don't look at me! I have nothing to save you! You look at me more than this, you will die. Look up. Look up. Ah, serpent bite me. Oh, serpent, ah, hey, serpent bite you. Look up, look up. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Look up, look up, look up. And as soon as they saw, they were saved. So even in the Old Testament, to get rid of the serpent that is biting, if anybody was helping anybody at all, what did he do? Look up. Don't look at me. Look at him. Look at the serpent on the tree. That's where your solution is. All those who looked, what did the Bible say? They lived. Excuse me. You are a pastor, sir. But you don't have what it takes to save people from the biting serpent. Your highest ministry is to get them to look up. So somebody is beaten by the serpent. And you are saying, hey, where is it? Where did he bite you? Ah, let's see it. Ah, oh, 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 what a shame. Please, please stretch your leg like this. What are you planning for that man? You just want to kill him. He was going to die. How could a preacher who knows that the serpent will kill you any moment from now engage you with anything? Could you meet somebody that the serpent has just beaten now? And you are now saying, oh, let's sing a song. <laughs> what kind of song are you singing to a man who is going to perish any time from now? The first thing you are saying, look to him, look to him, look up. Amen. So Paul said, I don't care about anything among you. What I'm concerned about Christ and him crucified. Because the biting serpent, the only thing that, this, that, that can deliver us from that death is him on the tree. 